Welcome, friends. Lost Scarf here, and it's time for basically a podcast with Verbalocity. Part four, five, I want to say at this point. Part many? Of this specific run of what th- happened at X Conference. I think yeah, three, okay. Like part four or five. No, I think we're... Th- okay, wait, wait. There was the Xbox... Okay, there was the console reveal. Yeah. I think we did the... When they did the third part... No, the third party was the console reveal, wasn't it? No. Yeah. God help me, I don't know. And then we did the PlayStation hmm. 1 the console reveal. And then we're here. And then... Yeah, I think it's the third one. Or fourth Probably one. in this series. Like yeah, I don't, I don't know anymore. And then they're gonna do another one, like right at the uh, right at the start. They're gonna do another one for like the other half of their first party stuff, right? They only showed half of them, I think. Was and we, there's also they said they're gonna be showing more. They've already showed off a bunch of software. Like, like uh, they even said during the pre-show for the Xbox showcase, the one we'll be discussing today, they weren't gonna be talking anything about hardware. So no release date, no price, nothing like that. They're still playing chicken with PlayStation. Both companies don't want to say the price of the release date yet. Of course. Which is starting to get annoying because we're rapidly approaching holiday 2020 time. Mm-hmm. Like we're in we're in the tail end of June right now. Let me just double check. Yeah, no, July. We're at the tail oh, end yeah, of July. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like August, September, October, November, December. Five months. Yeah. Until they're gonna be out. Unless they want to come out in like January, yeah, I, I think the reason why is because what happened last time. They're just they're playing a game of chicken. That's that's it. They want to. I assume they're already set in stone what their price is going to be. They just, they just, maybe okay. Not they're not set in stone, but they want to hopefully be the one that's lower than the other, or maybe they'll just be at the same price. I don't know. It becomes. I think they just be like, okay, we just say it at the same time or something, like just some dumb game of, all right, the three, two, one, say it, <laughs> because we might not even know the price until like it gets leaked by like GameStop or something like that. They're like, here, here's what it is, because we got it, we got to get these on the shelves and everything. Hmm. I don't know. It's just, it's just because when PlayStation did that, they really hurt Xbox. Uh, so I think they're just being overly careful. But I don't know. I think. They're going in two different directions where maybe the console price isn't the biggest issue. Like, the console price only decides whether or not you can buy two more games, I suppose, in a way. Hmm. Uh, so... And that's another point, actually, that hmm. just reminded me. There is rumors going around that there might be about a $10 increase in next-generation games going forward. Oh, yeah, right. So it, it wouldn't be one or two games. It might be just one and a half or something. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised. Honestly, we've been at sixty for how many years? For like two decades, maybe three decades. It's been at Long sixty. Long time. When well, was the last console generation that had lower than sixty dollars on average price? I'm trying to remember, games. like I think SNES was was uh, was fifty dollars. I think SNES or N sixty four was fifty dollars, or and then it yeah, jumped up f- to sixty around there as well. My first generation was like PS one slash PS two sort of time, mostly PS two. Yeah. Uh, original Xbox, so I've only had memories of about like 50, 60 pound games. Like, which, like they bounced stuff. between. Because uh, I know Game Boy was like 30 and $20. And, uh, and, and then with the consoles, yeah, 60 just feels like it's been the norm for so long. But with how much it costs to make games, I'm not surprised they want to go up another $10. As long yeah, as kn- I'm, I think what so. What can you really mm-hmm. say about it? Like, it's it, it's been coming for a while now, at yeah. least. Uh, I think that arguing people will be like, it's going to be 70, but you're still going to do DLC. He's like, yeah, of course they're still going to do DLC. Come on. Uh, game companies got to find ways to make money. And, well, things just cost more and more to make. Hardware is more expensive. Software is more expensive. It's how things work. Everything goes up in price. Uh, the fact we've been at 60 for so long is kind of incredible. But it's also why DLC happened. It's also why microtransactions happened. It's because we've been at this price for so long. That's really what I would say. It. That's the sole reason. I think once people tested out microtransactions and saw how much bloody money they were making, also true. Like, I distinctly remember the first game I really sank my claws into with microtransactions was the Mass Effect Three multiplayer mode with my friends. I met some of my best friends on that game on 360, and then hearing the stories coming out about that game where people were spending like five, six thousand dollars on the crates in that game, Blech. and then. 
the the big icebreaker for EA, who also made Mass Effect, was Ultimate Team, specifically FIFA Ultimate oh, right. Team. FIFA that, is I think, egregious. Has such a a, a vice like grip on the English young adult male's wallet. Yeah, like, like it's um, if, kind of. <laughs> it's wanna, not great because like. Football is such in the cold. Like we're going way off topic, but, yeah, but yeah, yeah. very short. Like, uh, like those kind. Like FIFA specifically is so ingrained in the English culture as the football game you play. Yeah. And now there's this like cocaine esque trading card system built in that will s- siphon money out of you. It's it, just getting a bit eh, tacky. It makes a crap ton of money for EA. It's it's why EA has the balls that they have that they swing around because it's okay if they get punched in the balls. They have a lot of ball. Um, yeah, they've got Madden Ultimate Team, NHL Ultimate Team, FIFA Ultimate Team. Yeah. They've got so many variants. They have way too much money. They they can afford to drop the ball like they did with Battlefront 2. Like they they can like they can afford to be egregious and then get slapped and then come back with something else. Like they did with Battlefront 2 leading into uh, Fallen Order or Fallen Kingdom. I can't remember the net title of it right now. Like they can they have the ability to rebound because they make so much money off FIFA. Yeah. And it's just so, bleh. Yeah. So in regards to price, pos- even before the conference started, nothing about the price of the console, nothing about the release date for uh, Series X and possible like ten dollar increase to games. Not a great platform to go into on. So they Xbox really had to pull things out of the I watched live. I you watched afterwards, right? You yeah, watched I watched it. Back. I watched the vod back on on YouTube. I had to shrink the chat. Oh my god, that chat was insane. Yeah, Ooh. console reveal chats are always a bit meh, not great. Oh yeah, the well, world premiere is this one. Um, I think also a selling point for them is if they're gonna put up the prices, then it makes the Game Pass even bigger of a selling point. Yes, I. This is something we can discuss at the end, but yeah. the LDR. Uh, every game talked about in the showcase is going to be available on launch on Game Pass, which which is awesome. That Game Pass is literally the dumbest deal right now in gaming. Mm-hmm. Straight down, they've got so much on there for just ten bucks a month. So interesting thing that um, there was a key word that one person said throughout the entire thing. There was one key word, at least I heard it once, and that was the ultimate Game Pass. Like there's going to be a yes. different Game Pass. Game Pass Ultimate, yes. Yeah, so yeah. that's been a thing for a little while now. It's okay. basically what Microsoft is trying to push people towards. Because, for example, this is something I actually only learned from a friend recently. Mm. They've gotten rid of the apparently the traditional yearly resubscription to Xbox Live Gold, which is what you need to play online okay. on Xbox. So what uh, the, the, the tiering for Game Pass is there's Game Pass Normal and Game Pass PC, which you pay the same for, mm-hmm. and you get like games on Xbox or games on PC for yeah. Game Pass. And then there's Game Pass Ultimate, which is regular Game Pass, Game Pass for PC, and membership to Xbox Live Gold in one thing. Okay, how much? And is... that's what they're trying to push people towards. Are they saying what the price of that is? The the price is that has been out for a little while okay. now. Let me actually Google that for you real quick. So real quick, now, uh, the Ultimate is if you want to play online, right? Or is there yeah, more to uh, that? Ultimate includes gold, and, ex- okay. and it has the gold membership is what you need. So it's a bundle, basically, of both passes and Xbox Live Gold, essentially. Okay, so as a single-player person or an offline person, you just need the basic pass, and that's it, right? Yeah, if you if you just want access to the games and you don't care about playing online, at least if you're playing a game that's single-player, yeah, you could just, in theory, get Game Pass Console or Game Pass PC. Okay. Here it is. Okay, so Game Pass Ultimate is all three... And also a couple other perks as well, including access to their Azure platform to allow you to play Xbox games on mobile when that eventually rolls oh, out. Oh, right. I forgot about that. Yeah. They mentioned that. Yeah. They, so uh, it, first see- it's ten ninety nine, or the first month for a pound that they love doing that offer. Like get your yeah. first month for a pound. You can get, get Game Pass for a pound. pound. Yeah. Yeah. And then, which is like two bucks or something. And then £10.99 a month for a uh, Ultimate, which I'll need to whack that in a converter real quick. Mm-hmm. Um, um, by doing that, uh, shoot, I had a, I, right. Um, they mentioned that with Ultimate, you can play Destiny Two from your phone, which I'm like, that sounds insane. All right, yeah, and it's not Stadia. 
uh, here yeah. we are. Okay, so it's about fifteen bucks. It's about fifteen bucks for ultimate. Like we're let's just in a year, a year, well, twelve months. So for a minimum like one twenty, I don't know if there's tax or anything. I don't think there's tax because it's digital. But uh, so one twenty at American for a year. That's two games, or at this point, potentially one game and then almost another game. That's a really good deal to play more than two games. I think they're relying on the... Well, they're relying on, well, it's a digital stuff, so they don't have to worry about physical. But it's also just, there's going to be times when people just, they'll have it, the subscription, like I have the subscription right now, where I'm just not playing anything. Like, it's not really meaning anything this month, I'm not playing anything right now. But like, in a month or two, I'll play something and then it'll justify having that again or something like that. Because sometimes people just set just forget their subscriptions. Yeah. So I and, I like it. There's going to be a hundred. Well, it'll be mentioned when we actually go over this thing. But they mentioned there's going to be at least a hundred games when the Xbox Series X comes out. It's going to be a lot of the some of the older stuff coming up, but also some new stuff at launch as well. Yeah, with the smart delivery, which is basically just really fancy way of saying uh, it's cross buy. Yeah, like it's cross buy. Which. Yeah. When you think about it, it should be. Like, that should just always be a concept. Like, you, you already own it. You already got the license for it. Just let it be over. And instead of it being like, you have to buy every port. Although... They, some, people, some companies, did. I remember, made that mistake last generation with... Uh, although, actually, Ubisoft, I think, did well with uh, Assassin's Creed Black Flag because mm -hmm. that was cross-generation. Okay. As Assassin's Creed Rogue was the last, last generation one for 360. But okay. going into Xbox One you could get Black Flag on both platforms. That was, like, one of the early cross-buys. Okay. Like, real quick mention, Jinx owns Final Fantasy X, like, every port and version of it. <laughs> like, she just wants to play it again, but she doesn't want to play it on, like, the older things, so she just buys the new version. So she's got it, like, on... I think it's also on PC, so like, she's got every version of that game. <laughs> so, uh, let's go ahead and talk about that showcase. Yes, yeah, so... It's a bit wild that you could potentially get the brand new Halo on release for a pound. Yeah. And that new Halo has... Looks promising, but has also stirred up some controversy. But Are you familiar with all the things coming out about it? I don't know, but real quick, as far as the one pound goes, like people play Halo for multiplayer a lot as well, so it's going to be an ultimate seller for sure. Yeah. Uh, as but, long as the multiplayer is good, is the important Oh, yeah. But it's, it's Halo. I don't... Halo is... In a way, it, Halo is can be considered kind of boring because it is the standard, but it's a solid standard, is how Halo's multiplayer Halo, is. Halo has slipped in the eyes of oh, the community okay. in some places over the past. Halo 4 and 5 were a bit rocky, mm. and Master Chief Collection was just a whole kettle of fish. That came out about a year and a half to two years, way too early. That, that project was, uh, for those of you that don't know, Halo Master Chief Collection was supposed to be Halo Reach, Halo 1 Remaster, Halo 2 Remaster, Halo 3 Remaster, Halo 3 ODST with Firefights, and Halo 4, all in one project, with all of their multiplayers included. Yeah. And it just bombed on release. It was a buggy mess mm -hmm. everywhere. So they've been taking the last year or two, basically slowly repairing it and getting it to a standard. Yeah. So between that and Halo 4 and 5 being a bit meh, not exactly being bomb burners. Yeah. He Halo Infinite going to the style that it's chosen, it it's got to start evoking some of that nostalgia to really sort of get the hype going again, at so, least for me. Yeah, something I like, though, is they're going for more of a you can go through the whole Halo, which that's cool. Because ev everyone does open world, but this is the open Halo, um, which I'm fine with. That can perfectly work. We've seen some really good open world first person shooters. Uh, the other thing on that is, it's on PC. That's a big one. Like they mentioned, it will be on PC. I'm like, oh, good. We're finally like, that's a thing now. Good. Like, because that's why I didn't. That's why the Master Chief Collection was so important to me is because I've never played Beyond Two, because it was always on just only Xbox. So now yep. I can finally play them all. Well, I don't know where is five on PC. Uh, Am I missing out on five suddenly? Like you would assume. I it's will on. Google. Is Halo Five on PC? Uh, no. That's a weird blind spot. <laughs> That's which is weird, weird because Halo Five's four is on PC. Yeah, like um, the full game is in launch mode. Is I believe. Yeah. Halo, because I have the collection. Does it tell me which games are? 
It's up to four, right? Or is it up to the ODS thing? Uh, Master Chief Collection is Reach, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Okay. With ODST. So five is a really weird blind spot. <laughs> hmm. That is an odd blind spot to have. Yeah, Reach. E. I don't see four at the moment. I, maybe that hasn't come out yet on the PC version. Yeah, yeah. on PC it might not be, but it's on the Master mm-hmm. Collection on my Xbox. Okay, so um, the hell, five needs to come out as a, as a remaster before Infinite comes out if people want to play in order. So the controversy is just um, there's a couple places. Okay, let's go over the good stuff first. Okay. So. Like one, as, there is wait, what? Like you, no, you say okay, okay. I'm about to go on a whole diatribe. Right, 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 right. So, as a layman who's only played some Halo compared to somebody who's definitely played a lot more Halo than me, I'll say from the layman side of things, looks nice, looks clean, looks solid. The guns was were looking pretty fun. They gave Master Chief some more things to play with. It looked nice to me. Uh, his co-pilot was a little bitchy. Partially understandable, he's in a very bad situation. <laughs> he was like, dude, whining a little too much. <laughs> but okay, okay, okay. That's that's the layman standpoint from it. You you know a lot more than I do. So So good things with the Halo Infinite presentation. One, they put it right at the start. Mm, yeah. Which I'm happy about. Because for starters, that was the one thing they were constantly advertising about the showcase was the Halo gameplay is here. The Halo gameplay is here. <laughs> Please, oh dear God, watch the Halo gameplay is here. Please don't <laughs> go away. So they put it right at the start of the actual main show. It wasn't the start of the pre-show. It was on main show. Yeah, There was some stuff revealed in pre-show, but including Dragon Quest coming to Xbox for the first time ever. Which is cool. But Yeah, which is pretty hype. And on Game Pass too. Nice. But the Halo Infinite gameplay at the start, they hit some good notes to start with. In terms of the classic style, it was in a Blood Gulch, Halo Ring looking environment. It's, you know, coming in with some more classic style gameplay first of, you know, of Master Chief coming out of a pelican with an assault rifle, taking out some grunts, some elites, all very well and good, evoking very much Combat Evolve, the first game. Yeah. Then he starts sprinting. So that's how, that's the first indicator. He starts sprinting. So that that style of four and five gameplay is back of having a sprint button. Then he starts shooting a couple more people, pulls out some new weapons. We see some new um, brute weapons. Basically, the, the TLD on the story is there's a faction called the Banished, which is different from the Covenant, and it's run by the Brutes. The you know the guys from Halo Three, if you remember them. Yeah, big gorillas. And yeah, the big gorilla race. And they have some new weapons coming in as well. Like there's a spiker type weapon coming in, but there's also essentially what amounts to the giant Hecky revolver of like 5 million gauge rounds that it fires out and possibly breaks your arm in the process. <laughs> and there's some modified human weapons too, like the, the Magnum was nowhere to be found, the classic Magnum. There's a more like 1911 slash you know, 5.7 looking pistol thing. Like Desi, there was a new shotgun which people are saying is replacing the classic shotgun? It's oh. like a striker style uh, drum magazine bullpup design thing. Okay. It's like, all right, okay, let's see where this goes. If it re- actually replaces the classic sh- pump action shark, and I'll be very surprised. Mm-hmm. And they showed off a couple other uh, new things as well. But then the leaked idea was shown off. That is, Master Chiefs have now got a grappling hook. Yeah. And I want to see how they use it mm-hmm. because. That's another thing that isn't in the classic formula and people that will not like. But at the same time, grappling hooks are always fun. <laughs> yes, There's never are. a time where a grappling hook isn't fun, especially if, from the way they're looking here, it's not like another returning feature they, uh, they're they bringing back from Halo 3, gear items. They, they showed off a one-way bubble shield looking thing that you could just throw on the ground. This is in his armor that you can use all the time, it looks like. You can actually like just cause style or Titanfall style grapple into an enemy and melee them. Yeah. But for all of the good stuff, there was some questionable things. One of the big ones was there has been some criticisms of the art style. And if I imagine you've probably seen the reaction macro 
on Twitter at some point, Scarf of the One Brute's face of like, don't be mad, please. Just looking like left or right of shot. Uh, for, the, for those of you wondering, basically there, there was a specific frame of one of the combats where Master Chief's getting in a Brute's face and meleeing him. And the guy's like, uh, the Brute's face is looking kind of PS2-y. <laughs> and it's just like, the, it, it's the dumbest thing. So that has turned into an entire thing by itself because, of course, console war, PlayStation people jumping on it. Like, also, like, side note: the console war is just dumb. Why is that yeah. still a thing, Scarf? Like, because we like tribes. <laughs> on a on a uh, psychological scale, uh, society likes to break things down into smaller groups, and it likes an us versus them mentality because we like competition to the point that it's useless, but it's still a thing. Uh, instead of having fun, we're just being bitches. That's about it, really. Uh, humans are bitches. That, that's the lesson of the day. So, <laughs> well, yeah. um, it's, people will nitpick as best they can. And mm. it depends, like, that's like an in-frame thing, isn't it? Like, like, in animation, it's like, everything's great, and then there's a freeze frame, but not looking so great, right? I don't and know that's if that's run with. yeah. I don't know if that's just well. This is the demo, so they're not doing every single frame, or if that's just something they missed, or what, or what that is, or it's just an in frame, like in between frame kind of thing. Like, were they cutting a corner, or was it just uh, they don't need to be perfect for a demo? I'm not in sure. Regards- in regards to cutting corners, though, Scarf, there was one other criticism that came out about it, which is semi-valid in my opinion, but also not. Like, I want to get your opinion on it. Basically, okay. it was found out that the demo that was shown wasn't run on an Xbox Series X. It was on a PC build. Cranked up. And they did say in the demo that it will be like 60 FPS on Series X, 4K guaranteed. No drops. The but- only... Oh, here. Keep going. There is a line. There is a line of thinking that says if you're demoing stuff for the Series X, should even if it is coming out on PC, shouldn't you be running it on a Series X? The only reason why it, it would be okay, and we'd have to know, is if it's the PC is just the same specs as the X. That's it. It was the exact same specs as the Series X. They did say similar. Specs, okay, similar. But not so exact. then it's really just how close that is. Because uh, maybe they're just still putting the X together. I don't know. Like, they probably have a build, but maybe they're still trying to optimize that sucker. Like, you want to optimize it. They're going to still optimize it as the years go by. That's what consoles do. They optimize it to get cheaper materials, uh, but still hold up. Or just they'll see if maybe things burn out, and then they have to replace those parts with better parts. Things like that. Or just over time, better technology always happens. So potentially they are just looking at ways to optimize the X still. And so they're like, well, here's where we're at right now. And we'll just use a PC simpler than just bringing out a a Series X for it or something like that. There's excuses that you can make, for sure. Uh, Are they great excuses? To an extent, they can be. But I just think if the PC is on the same level as the Series X where it is right now, then I don't have a problem. As long as it's that. A younger me who doesn't recognize that would just hop on it and be a dork about it. But yeah, just if it's if it's one to one or close enough to it, then I don't see the problem here. It, it's probably just easier to do on the PC than it was to do a Series X for this presentation. Hmm. Because they then... could easily just, if they are optimizing the Series X more and more, then they can easily just change out the parts on the PC easily. So that's a thing as well. Yeah, that's a valid way of looking at it as well. There's there, there's valid arguments on both sides. But this yeah, is yeah. like, on the one hand, this is meant to be the Series X presentation. You should do it. On the other hand, though, like, if it's coming out on PC, keep it some of the specs. It's fine. Yeah. So, behave, so there was a lot to chew on in the first nine minutes of the presentation mm-hmm. in terms of things to look at. And then immediately afterwards, State of Decay 3 trailer. And that one was interesting for a couple of reasons. One, anyone listening with headphones on had their ears bleed because it was literally <laughs> just screaming. It's pretty good. It was a woman's. It was woman, a good voice. You saw the trailer, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you saw. 
all it is is just a woman screaming and then a zombified deer screaming. That's it. Yeah. Uh, that was... Uh, it doesn't show you anything about what the game is. All it shows you, of course, is just like, well, so you had to carry threes happening, so if you're a fan, well, then you're going to be a fan of this, probably. It was just interesting to see a wolf get owned by a deer. And then the lady scream, which... Pretty good scream. That was a good scream. But there's not much to oh. chew on there, really. It's just... All right. Yeah. <laughs> That's there's coming. a reason for that. Because apparently the game's still in pre-production. All right. Okay, like, much. you're showing a trailer for something that's not going to be out until, like, 2021, like, end of 2021 minimum. Yeah, people okay. are still chewing on State of Decay 2. They don't need to be hyped for 3 yet, I don't think, but... Eh. Yeah, State of Decay 2 still got some stuff to play in. Like, yeah, it's been out for a while, a little while now, but they're still adding stuff to it. I hope State of Decay... I, I doubt State of Decay... De 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 yeah, English is hard. <laughs> I doubt State of Decay 3 is going to go the way of Scalebound, but you don't want to announce stuff this early normally. Yeah, let's see here. I just remember I tweeted about it so I can look at these things. Okay, so I did shorthand on everything. Uh, one random thing, because it's going to come up in a second, is uh, they kept saying 60 frames per second. Uh, 60 frames throughout. I'm like, the ghost of TB is happy. Mm. Just curious. If, I'm really curious if they can hold up or not. If they can really maintain 60 the whole time, that is an impressive feat at this point. Because yeah. I feel like a lot of games just, they they rested on 30 frames as their laurels for a very long time. Yeah, for example, the next game after that, Forza Motorsport, the next-gen Forza, uh, that one thing they said in the trailer, it, it wasn't too much in said trailer, apart from just like, look at the cars, which always yeah. happens. But one thing they hammered on, I remember, is 4K 60 FPS with ray tracing guaranteed. Yeah, that and is... in a game like Forza, which is pretty, yeah, that's going to be good. That is as much about the graphics as it is about the actual driving. Uh, you you got you have to put up or shut up when it comes to Forza because they've always been about that with Forza, and it looks looks really nice. Whether or not you are a fan of uh, playing it or not, just visually you have to acknowledge that looks really good. That looks very yeah. nice. When it comes to the uh, the the graphics. The, the the hunt for perfect graphics it looks really good here's a question for you though yeah something that we definitely know about how it's going to play in the case of forza moving to the next game everwild what do you think about that visually it's amazing the art style is really good the atmosphere is really good the voice work that we got to hear is really good have we seen any gameplay for this thing that's the thing. Apparently okay. the game is still being figured out at Rare. The gameplay isn't set in stone yet. So it's a really cool concept. I'm liking the concept. What the hell is the gameplay gonna be? Yeah, like, is like, it... I thought it was some sort of druid simulator, and I'm like, alright, I'm kind of down for this. Like, yeah. protector of the forest, like, like, like half Viva Pinata from Rare, mm. half, like, adventure game. I'd be down for that. Yeah, I would not have a problem with a game where you're more of a, you just keep nature going and everything, like, you're just doing stuff with nature. Like, open-world, nature-y stuff, you don't have necessarily have to fight monsters all the time. Like, I'd be interested in a game like that, where you just maintain nature, and if threats happen, you deal with them. But I don't know what the hell the game's gonna be. It just feels like it's gonna be some sort of open-worldy, uh, run-around-and-do-whatever game, but... There's not a... There, mm. We just don't have gameplay, so I have no clue what it's gonna be. All you can do is guess. All you can do is make a guess. But visually, yeah, it looks wait. good. I like everything about... The paint of the entire thing looks great. Like all uh, everything on the art side of it looks great. It's just what's the gameplay going to be? What are we going to be digging into? We don't know. All right. So Everwild was a very much a strange one. One game that you can pretty much assume how it's going to play though, Scarf, just be <laughs> just because of the style and the, and the developers behind it. Yeah, don't nod. Tell me why. Ain't nothing but a heartbreak. Ain't nothing but a mistake. <laughs> Everyone <laughs> keeps doing that reference. Seriously! I don't know why they went with that name. Backstreet Boys will forever haunt this company. Like, if there is not a reference, if, there, if that song isn't actually in the game, everyone's going to notice that. <laughs> everyone's going to comment on that. Like, why isn't the actual song in here? Like, 
I just what this is the story of Lance Bass or wait actually which band was that Bax no no Lance Bass is N Sync this is the story of some guy from Backstreet who I can't remember his name right now Nick Lachey Nick Lachey the story of Nick Lachey that also might be N Sync look I don't know these guys uh <laughs> Justin Timberlake is also N Sync who the hell's in Backstreet well these are the I'm also Joey Fatone is also rain it in rain it in we're going down the rabbit hole it I can't think but anyway. <laughs> anyway, if there's nothing backstreet in there, people are like, what the hell? But the game itself, knowing Don't Nod, knowing Life is Strange, uh, it's gonna make you feel some emotions. And this one's uh it's gonna it's gonna mess with people who just have like uh issues with their parents. That's what this one's gonna do. For sure. Yeah, the only things we know about this is the two protagonists are twins. Yeah. Uh they've got some sort of supernatural bond. And, and the game will include experience, like social themes about the trans experience. Oh, really? Transgender okay. experience. That's the only things we know for sure about. And also, I think it's in like the small town Alaska. Okay, and they That's deal it. with like ghost memories. I don't know if it's their only their memories or I don't know if it's like ghosts or their own past. Like there's some sort of they can like see that, memories. Yeah. And I know it's gonna be trans. Okay. But they are very much what are the issues with kit with the teens right now or young not young adults with the teens. That's what these games are. What are the issues with the teens right now? So, like, Life is Strange 1 dealt with, like, identity and where your place is and kind of like some punky kind of stuff with, with, with the first one. The second one was more dealing with immigration because, yeah, that's the issues we're being dealing with. Just, like, mm. how do brown people deal with being in a white place? Um, and very racial place. And this one's going to be, so there's trans in it. Okay, so that tells me some things of what they're going to be dealing with. Um, but also just, it's, their mother tried to kill one of them, or both of them, I don't know. Yeah, in the so, trailer, it was one of the memories they had. So it's gonna be, like, did the mom see a demon in them, or, or did she, so it's gonna be some sort of, like, well, what was her justification, what was her thoughts behind things? Uh, because I think they're gonna try, they're gonna see their mom's side of things, which sounds interesting. And that just all sounds like it's gonna be an interesting topic and everything i just don't know they're gonna they're gonna go after your emotions that's what don't not do i just don't know how good it'll be uh two is not the funnest game but we'll see hmm. however games that also tug at your emotions there was a two for one special at this section because not only do we get tell me why but we all, they also talked about the Series X port for Ori and will of the wisps aka please don't let that goddamn owl die simulator <laughs> Having not played it yet, I own it. I should play it. Um, Apparently, it's really good. It, of course, it's Ori. Um, yeah. 120 it, FPS was the main thing they said. That's they, the interesting they thing. the The thing about FPS is well, also 120. How many TVs can handle 120 FPS? Is one argument. Like, how many TVs can do 4K right now? Anyway, also that. Mo 4K is becoming a standard these days. Like okay. my TV isn't 4K because I don't like buying new TVs on the regular. Like that's like a seven, eight year old TV. Yeah, that's the but same with 4K me. 4K is coming the standard these okay. days. But so then, 120 FPS though, that is not standard. Yeah. You're right. So that's gonna be another thing as well. Um it looks nice and fluid. The thing is, frame rate isn't everything. Like it can make some interesting things, but it's Honestly, uh, 120 frame rate the whole way is actually not good. Fra 120 frame rate in choice moments can be amazing. It's really how you I use it. Mm, for a platformer, like, like yeah, for a game like Tell Me Why, frame yeah. rate doesn't matter at all because it's not responsive. For a platformer? For a platformer? Where, yes. It's like, like a, like a uh, fighting game or a shooter. Yeah, or yeah, a yeah. platformer. Games where mechanically you need to be responsive and snappy. But more frame for, rate means it's more snappy. I'm more arguing from an uh, an animation side. From an artistic side. Um, 120 frames can just get overwhelming at a point, and it's not as good as it... It doesn't do as much as it can. Uh, if you put 120 frames at the right moments, it can make something very impactful, animation-wise. If you're just going 120 the whole time, it all just kind of... It bleeds a little bit. Do you have a 120 hertz monitor? No, no, no. I've seen examples of it though, like, but I don't have a monitor that does that normally. I've just seen what people do when they speed up frame rates, and like that actually just kind of ruins some of the art artistry behind what's going on. 
Because there is some yeah, deliberateness. Like that's artificial. That's that's called frame uh, interpolation you're talking about. Okay. Frame interpolation ruins it. That's when you're trying to artificially smoothen things. Mm -hmm. A lot of TVs have that feature. Okay. Where they'll have like a movie mode. Where they'll try and interpolate frames to smoothen it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actual raw 120 frames a second is crisp as hell i've i had the fortunate chance to experience like 120 hertz 4k when okay. i went to ninja 3 to record some stuff with there mm -hmm. that was the only time i was able to experience it but it is silky smooth and i really want a monitor for it one day for my because okay. uh, this monitor here is 60 like it's 60 1080, 1080p so then that thing is probably what's shading what i'm thinking yeah so it'll be interesting to actually see it on 120 monitor yeah, like frame interpolation does exactly what you describe. Okay, like making it seem all like giant. Eh, like, mm. okay. okay, so that's what I, that's what it's happening. Okay, so my ignorance there. All right, so then I well then I need to actually see it on one twenty because uh, they showed example, but it's like not enough of an example. Uh, you'd want to see a lot more because I've seen. Well, when you ever go to Walmart or whatever, you get to see it for a little bit because they're showing off what they can do. But yeah. that's about it. And then Outer Wilds. I mean, Outer the Obsidian Worlds. section time. Oh yeah, Obsidian Three section. Games. So the Obsidian section was in there. Uh, Outer Worlds. Grounded was Obsidian. Uh, Outer Worlds was Obsidian. Yes, that was basically Fallout New Vegas in space, and that they announced the Peril on Gorgon expansion. Yeah. Story expansion. Like September noir sort of space noir themed kind of thing. You. If, yeah, you, if you've got Game Pass, you get yeah. it for a okay. uh, 10% discount. Oh, yeah. Like, if you're a fan of Outer Worlds, then you'll enjoy it, I, I would assume. Yep, it's just all Outer Worlds. Cool. Yep. Like, however, the Grounded trailer was the funniest thing in this entire conference. Grounded is curious, because I'm like, it's like, honey, I shrunk the, the kids plus Minecraft. And... Like it, and baseball. I think it's I don't Left 4 Dead style. A Left 4 Dead style as well, in some regard. Yeah, I saw like four teams. So I'm wondering if it's like Left 4 Dead style or if it's more you just do squads and here's an area to tackle. Like, is it or is it more like Sea of Thieves where it's just a bunch of kids in an area kind of thing? I think it's Left 4 Dead style. Like, hmm. you are specifically trying to get unshrunk because honey, I shrunk the kids. And you're trying to avoid bosses such as ants and spiders trying to murder you and your friends. Okay, yeah, it says they are trying to get back to normal. Okay. Yeah. All right, so then, However, yeah. The, the trailer was so good. I'm not going to spoil it for those of you who haven't seen it and are watching the VOD, are watching the, this, but just go look up the Grounded Survive the Yard trailer. It is... I love it when when companies know exactly where they are in terms of the game scene. It's, like, beautiful. Yeah. That's all I'm going to say on that. And then they only had a trailer, which at least it looked nice, for Avowed. Which... Yes. So my interpretation of seeing these games all together is like, Obsidian wants to be their own version of Bethesda. That's what it feels yeah. like. Because like, like, here's our Elder Scrolls game. Here's our Fallout game. Like, alright, that's cool. Um, it's nice to have more options as far as those kind of games, if you like those kind of games. Especially because... I'd like to see them... I would like to see an Elder Scrolls game that isn't an Elder Scrolls game, just because uh, Oblivion... And, like, Skyrim was just more Oblivion, but with, like, even better in a bunch of different ways, so I would assume 6 is just going to be more Skyrim, but better in other ways. But also have a bunch of its flaws still, because uh, Skyrim had a lot of uh, Oblivion's flaws as well. So I assume we're going to inherit a lot of good things, but also a lot of flaws. Like, the, the problem with... They just give you a lot... A lot and a lot, a lot of like. If you like it, I guess, but eventually you just get it gets stale with how much of just the same thing they're giving you. It's like here's like a hundred dungeons, but they're all the same dungeon basically. That's my one problem with Skyrim. <laughs> and Oblivion kind of had that too, so I figure six will be like that as well. So I want to see what these guys do. Elder Scrolls like those Garth of Ald is going to be because it looks Elder Scrollsy, yeah. But we know it's set in the Pillars of Eternity universe. It's first-person Pillars of Eternity, apparently. I haven't played Pillars of Eternity, but apparently it's a fantastic uh, oh, TRPG. So, Skyrim-style game, or Elder Scrolls-style gameplay in Pillars of Eternity. That is from interesting. Obsidian. I didn't know that, it was Pillars of Eternity. Okay. 
yeah, it, it's not it, it's not like an original like universe thing from Obsidian. This is like their big budget first person swing at Elder Scrolls, leaning on Pillars of Eternity for their for the canon in the yeah. universe. Pillars of Eternity was their version of Baldur's Gate. Yeah. So uh, I'm if you get party members and stuff too, that'd be kind of cool. Okay, all right. Yeah, I guess I didn't write. I I, I remembered they called it Eorza, uh, Eora, whatever. I'm like that name sounds familiar. I'm like, oh, that's why it's I, Pillars of Eternity. Okay. I didn't recognize it. Until someone I read about it. It was in Pillars of Eternity. Like I haven't played it, so I didn't know. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, okay, all right. Uh, I'm more interested now because of that as well. Because I am a fan of Pillars of Eternity. I, I like those games. So, all right, all right. I'm more sold on that one. Like, all right. Following that then, was. There was a like, speed run of games. There was Dusk Falls, which art style is real interesting. Like 2D, like uh, like interactive drama style game. But it's it's paintings basically. It's really low frame rate animation. So it's like one watercolor painting of a person, and like their face will change slightly to indicate an emotion. It is the it is an art style I've not seen before, but I really dig it. However, the like gameplay wise, I'm not massively into interactive dramas. It's the story looks interesting. It's apparently set in the American Southwest, and it's like two families trapped in a hostage situation or something. Yeah, like you so, saw from the trailer. Um, the art direction is interesting. It's like, in some ways, it feels like they could have just acted it out. Because <laughs> that's literally what it is. They they acted it out, and then they redrew everything. That's how they did it. That was their art style. So, I'm like, alright, it's interesting. I feel like you could have just used the actors, sort of. But I think people don't really like interactive live action compared to interactive art. So that might be why they did that, but it, it's very lifelike because yeah, they were drawing actual people and everything. The story itself, interactive drama, that's going to be for somebody. <laughs> yep. No, but it's a really good story. The more people will try it out, but I don't know. Uh, it's interesting at least. Like as far as being interesting, it's interesting. <laughs> Indeed, interesting, interesting, interesting. <laughs> Moving from interesting, though, for me at least, Garth, to mild disappointments. Uh, first of all, we had a update from Hellblade 2. All we got from it was that the location was set in Iceland, and you could watch a developer diary about how they did location yeah. scouting. And it that's looks it. pretty. It looks pretty, that's it. Um, yeah, it's like Iceland, no gameplay. I Damn. really need to play one still. I haven't played it. It's really good. So I gotta play one, and then I guess I'll play two eventually. Um, just looks nice. That's it. It looks nice. The the song thing. Nice. Like, the song's really good. Like, Jesus Christ. All right. But that's it. All right. Just looks that's pretty. It. That's all it was. That's all the, there was no new gameplay, nothing. It was just stuff from the last reveal, and then we're in Iceland now. Yay. Yeah. Then the second disappointment for me was the Psychonauts 2 trailer. But not because it was Psychonauts 2, but the setup for the trailer was it was a double fine, like, logo, and then Jack Black talking about how something's going to be metal as hell. And that means Brutal Legend 2. And yeah. I about had a heart attack. Yeah. And then they start, like, Psychonaut Stew was coming up, and I uh, I about lost it on my desk here. Like, I was like, oh, I, I was, yeah, that was like, weird. Brutal Legend 2! Yeah, it was time. really weird. It was really, really weird. He's like, it's going to be metal. Like, you have Jack Black and he says metal. And it's Psychonauts too. I was like, that's a really weird. Why did what? All right, okay. I should have waited to see EA. If I should have held off until I saw the EA logo because they're the publishers of Brutal Legend, uh, they got the rights. Oh, okay. But, that might be a problem. Oh, I let get caught up in the hype. I I really hope one of that to be Brutal Legend too. Psychonauts two finally happening. One was pretty good. Um, the trailer didn't sell me on it though. It really didn't sell me. Like it looks nice. It gives you a lot more of what Psychonauts 1 was, but I don't know if everything's Beatles, I'm not going to be a big fan. <laughs> I'm hoping that's just one area. But it made it look like it's just an open world area in one brain, and it's a Beatles brain. So it really depends on what they're actually doing. Is it just a big open world and multiple brains, or are we just doing one brain? Yeah. Because in the original it was, you did a bunch of brains, but there were these smaller sections. Like, I don't know if you played Psychonauts 1. No, I haven't. Okay. So in Psychonauts 1, he, he goes into multiple people's heads, but there are these smaller sections. This one, 
the this this Beatles area looked big. Looked like they were doing a lot in there. So I don't know if it's just one big Beatles brain they're gonna do, or they're gonna, or this is just how big the game is. There's a lot of stuff to do here, and then you'll go to another brain, you'll go to another brain, and so on and so forth. There wasn't a lot of information there. It's cool having Jack Black, but it uh, when he said metal, I'm like, wait, are we getting brutal legends here? Because <laughs> I'm like, mm. I read Psychonauts too, but I'm like. Wait, did I read that wrong? It's actually brutal. It's like, nope, no, it's Psychonauts. Nope. Then, that was some big news off the bat, to do with Destiny. That Destiny was some big one. They showed off more gameplay of the expansion Beyond Light, which had some of the new powers to do with a stasis element, which is like darkness powers, which was already big enough. They showed off some big gameplay changes there. For example, be able to throw the stasis and then stand on it. That was pretty big. And then a couple other things like trapping, destroying. But that wasn't the big stuff, for me at least. The big announcement was, if you have Game Pass, not only do you will you be getting Destiny 2, you will get every single expansion of the game yes. for free, including Beyond Light, for no extra cost. That is huge. Because the one complaint there is with Destiny right now, even with New Light consolidating expansions free to play, is that you had to catch up, you had to get the expansions, you had to do this, that, and the other. Yep. And yeah, there is content sunset sunsetting coming, which is actually removing old stuff from the game to put in a vault to make it easy for the devs to work on the thing. Because it's like the game takes a hundred gig patches right now or something because there's too much Jesus. shit in it. All right. But every single expansion available, including new ones. For free, if you have Game Pass. Bruh! <laughs> it's an amazing Bruh. deal. Like, basically, when you get Game Pass, you by default have Destiny 2. That's it. Yeah. Pretty nice. You have full fat Destiny 2 ready to go. And then it's going to be enhanced with 4K and 60 FPS, and you can play it on your phone. Like, okay, all right. Do you want to mm. not fall behind? You can still play on your phone, I guess. I want to raid on the goddamn toilet without using a mirror. Right? I don't know how well the gameplay will be, but there you go. You can do that. Yeah. And then... then... There was a big one after that, too. I was not expecting this. Stalker 2 on console. It Actually, is... straight announcement, too, of Stalker existing. Yeah, like, it's a couple things. One is, we haven't had Stalker in ever, and the other one is, it's o it's always been only PC, so now we got a console one on it. All right, okay. There's a lot going on there. Stalker is, I don't want to say niche, but a certain group absolutely loved that game. So It was Metro before Metro existed. Yeah. It, that, that literally is what it is, yeah, pretty much. And it's, if you're a fan of bleak <laughs> apocalyptic future, it's pretty good. If you uh, want some more Seeker with your bleat, Stalker 2 is coming. <laughs> yes. Basically. So, it's 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 a worthwhile game, for sure. If you're a fan of Metro, it's a worthwhile game, for sure. Um, All the previous, like, Stalkers, they were legendary games yeah. in their own right on PC. Yes, they were. Played them a long time ago. Uh, I'm. It's been way too long, though. I can't remember Jack, because Metro kind of replaced it a little bit. It was good times, though. So, Stalker 2, big announcement for a lot of people, so we're looking forward to that. And then there was another... Like, the, the hits kept coming in this section, Scarf, because yeah. after, if we're talking dark, let's go grim dark. Yeah. Because a Warhammer 40k game yeah. reared its head. Well, yeah, when it was coming, like, I heard Inquisitor, I'm like, oh, Inquisitor, wait, what? We got a, we got a 40k? Like, all right, all high, right. High English voice, Inquisitor, I see a melter gun, what's going on yeah, here? Yeah, like, ooh. Like, <laughs> And then it shows Fat Charm, like, oh, oh, I know what's coming. Okay. And then, like, oh, like please be Vermin Titan 40k. Yeah. Please be Vermin Titan 40k. And that's what it is. Warhammer, Warhammer 40k Dark Tide, four player co op game made by the same guys who made Vermin Tide out in 2021. And you play as Imperial Guardsmen. Perfect. And you go up against Grandfather Nurgle by the look of it. Yeah. So. Mwah, beautiful. My, Couldn't ask for anything more. My only thing is, I'm really curious how it's going to be, just because what made Vermintide also special was the characters were very, very fun yes. characters. They also were very varied in their abilities. And so I don't know how this is going to work, because you're just, you know, well, you're just guys for the Emperor now. So we'll see how that goes. They do have some variants in what they can do, but hmm. uh, what made 
uh, what was also great about Vermintide was, well, you're playing, you got an elf in here, you got a dwarf in here, so you're not just doing only humans. Here, you're just humans. Hmm. So, I'm curious how that'll be. Because they can't just go like, oh, hell, oh, hey, one of the other races joins. Like, no, they would kill them, so they can't like, just have them. Yeah, no Xenos filth in this game. Right? Absolutely not. So, I was like, that's one thing that can ding against it. Uh, but that's more for people who are hardcore about 40k. Um, both ways on that. One is they can't possibly have that, and the other is you still want to see the other races because it'd be fun to play them. Hmm. At the end of the day, though, with the pedigree we have here, I have nothing but faith. Like, fat, I have a nice relationship with Fat Shark. I like them a lot. They like me. Uh, I'm playing this the second it comes out. I know that already. Because they make good game. Then, nice guys, too. <laughs> going down a little bit in hype, but still very good, Tetris Effect Connected. I'm curious. Tetris Effect was a, a, like low-key kind of a banger, from what I understand, especially if you played it in VR. Oh, I yeah. don't play Tetris personally, mm. but like I have the soundtrack on my Spotify because the soundtrack for that game was just the best thing. And now they're like, it's coming to Xbox because before it was PC, PS4. Yeah. It's enhanced and it has multiplayer. And the multiplayer looks nuts. What um the smart thing about Tetris as a whole is they from the beginning they realize we need to have catchy songs with these games. And they've always done that, which has been a good thing about it. Uh for me, I think the best Tetris is still Tetris 99. Battle Royale Tetris is so intense. That game though, Scarf, like Tetris Battle Royale, when I first heard the concept. <laughs> Sounded dumb. It's like, what <laughs> is the point? Why is Tetris jumping on Battle Royale? Then you see it, and it clicks. It's like, <laughs> I, I see, I see what you're doing. Okay, I'm not. I'm, I'm probably not going to play it. I don't have a Switch, and I'm yeah. not into Tetris. But this is fun as hell to watch. It's <laughs> it is intense. <laughs> mm. It it just like Fortnite, just like PUBG, just like um, Apex. When you get to the last two people or the last two teams, whatever then the heart rate's up because you're like, this is it, we're almost there, almost there. So you just, you play out your damn mind. You'll play the best game of Tetris you've ever played when it's just you and someone else at the end. And it is intense, it is crazy, and it's just so fun. Uh, Tetris Connected, there's just some fun ideas here, like the big pieces, or when you combine multiple people's Tetris together, like, this is just a fun idea here, so mm -hmm. if you're a fan of Tetris, that'll be fun. Then we get into some of the more like story heavy section now because the gunk was the next one, which I mean looks cool. I couldn't actually tell what kind of game it really was until I read the description. It's like it's an action adventure game set on a planet where there's like toxic sludge called the gunk, and you've got a gauntlet that's a hoover. It's like I so, don't want I cool. To their credit, okay, so I know the pedigree of these guys as well. Image and form. I own every single one of their games. Either I bought them or they gave them a cop gave me a copy of their games. These are the people who made the SteamWorld games. So SteamWorld Dig. Uh, oh, they SteamWorld, made SteamWorld. Yeah. Okay. So Dig, uh, whatever the, the Space Pirate one was. Uh, then the one with the Knights. I can't remember the names of them right now. I own all of them, though. I own every SteamWorld game. I own their... Their, uh, their tablet game. I just own all their stuff. They make fun games. They make interesting ideas. Now, because of that, because they're always making a new concept every time, they're not perfectly polished, but they're still fun ideas. So, like, their games, they're, they're a consistent 7 or 8 out of 10. That's how their games are. So, the gunk, I feel, will be, like, at least at minimum, like, a 7 out of 10. Because that's their track record. Uh, they just make fun ideas, and it'll be fun. You'll like it. And if you really like the concept, you'll go all the way through. If you don't like the concept, you'll peter out at some point. But it will be fun from the beginning, because that's how image and form are. They're always at least fun or interesting. And this being a exploration puzzle solver with this gunk and everything, like that'll scratch some itches for some people. So I have a lot of faith in that. I just have faith in this developer, just like I do with Fat Shark. I want to see more gameplay first. Because yeah. I couldn't tell what game it was, at least for me. However, mm -hmm. with you giving them the endorsement, I'll I'll wait and see what's coming on with it. Now, a game which I was a bit tepid on to a game which I'll respect from a very far distance away. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm scared shitless of it. Yeah, I'm not playing the it. The medium. 
This one the, is a game that if I did not have so much fear in me, I would play. Like, it's so interesting. Um, the double environment rendering is yes. so interesting. Taking use of the SSD. Like, it's the it's, split Silent Hill style of thing, but at the same time. Yeah. Like, this is a concept that I've wanted. It's so... Like, there's some kind of concepts that are that have been kind of this, but not perfect. And they're fully going in on, like, f maybe 15 years I've thought about this, where I'm like... I would like if there was a game where you're in basically two worlds at once, kind of. And to solve the puzzles, you got to switch between them on the fly. And this game is that. So I'm like, oh, sweet, that concept's finally happening. Because we've had a... Uh, there was uh, a platformer that was like that. Was was the, the Amazing Sisters or the Gianna Sisters, something like that. Or these two twins. The, the, yeah, there's, there, there's been a couple of games like that. There was one yeah. from the maker of Portal that was kind of like that, where you jump through different universes. Yeah. Like the amazing genius of something, something, something. Mm -hmm. And you just jump through different universes with different properties. But that was like one universe at a time. Yeah, one this at a time. Look of this it, is at the same time. Both horror worlds on top of each other simultaneously. Yeah. Like they're, you can either swap between them or play them at the same time. That's what I like, is you can swap between them at the same time. That's really cool. Because there was a game, very old, 30 years maybe, called Dark Seed. Dark Seed is a game where you're in you're in Earth, but at the same time, there's another reality happening at the same time. And you have to go yep. through portals to go between them to move, th move things around like puzzles or whatever. And, like puzzle pieces out of the way or in the way or whatever. In order to finish that game. Like that, that's a concept, this concept has existed, it's just not at the exact same moment. So that's what makes it so special is... You can do it on the fly, and that is pretty cool. Also, it's going to be scary as balls. Like, these are the people who made, was it Layer of Fear, and... Oh, what's the other one? They made another scary as balls game. I forget the name of it. But they make scary games. They make very sc and they've scary got, games. They've got, I think, the audio designer from Silent Hill on it. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like, the original Silent Hill. like, nope. Yeah, they're, <laughs> they're going to... Okay, stay over yeah, there. They're going to, in theory... I believe because this they've just done so many horror games. They should at this point have a very good understanding of how to amp you up before they they really hit you. So yeah, I don't want anything to do with this. I don't want anything yeah. to do with this. But I am excited for people who are who are fans of this. I respect it. Come all the way over there, please. Don't come in. <laughs> yeah. uh, going from horror to animu, Fantasy Star Online Two expansion. Looks nice. Um, having played uh, PSO before, my only problem with PSO games is they are a little wooden, and you can still see it a little bit in the gameplay here. But what's cool about it is you're, you're, there's still some woodenness to it, but you're moving a lot more in this game. Also, there's a lot more vertical. That tall didn't monster original, at the end? Whew. Didn't PS, like the original PSO2 in Japan come out in like 2009 or something? Yeah, so that's why I'm happy there's an expansion. <laughs> I mean, PSO2... Release dates. It's a very old game. Of July 2012. Yeah, it's it's pretty old, so you need a new you need it to grow up a little bit, and it looks like it's grown up with this expansion. So I'm excited for for that. Also, because we don't have that many MMOs that are worthwhile, so this might be worth playing. Like right now, it's there's a big stagnation in MMOs. Uh, what's the newest MMO that's come out? I can't. Uh, newest MMO that isn't complete garbage. Uh, that would be... Uh, Bless Unleashed on Xbox, maybe? What Unleashed? Bless Unleashed. Like, that's out on on Xbox. But I mean, there are, like, a lot of MMOs are in the pipeline right now. There's a lot in yeah. Early Access, but it, Early Access MMO is a whole kettle of fish I don't want to go into. It's partially because like, a lot of MMOs just died. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, they just keep dying. Like WoW happened, and then a bunch of WoW clones happened. So you got all the perfect, you got all the perfect world uh, MMOs, which are just okay. The um, Amazon MMO, New World. What's going on with that as well? Like yeah. it just keeps getting delayed. Where is that? I just um. Also, MMOs are hard to make, and they're also hard to make interesting. But this at least looks like it'll be fun. So there's that. Going yeah. from. Sorry, go on. You finished? Finish. No, just I'm playing FF14 again, and it's it's fun. FF14 just broke 20 uh, million uh, uh, registered accounts. It's like Jesus. We have to talk about this real quick. It's not a, to do with the Xbox showcase, but yeah. FF14 swinging 
its gentleman's area across the entirety of gaming by announcing that, as now part of the free trial, you get the entirety of Heavenswood. Heavens, Heavenswood. Heavenswood. Yeah, Heavenswood. Heavenswood. As for free. Yeah. That's a what? lot of game. That is a That's lot like of game. That's 100 hours or something, right? Yeah, yeah, for yeah. free. That is a lot of game for free. And this is... Be like that's not even here. That's in August, like eleventh or something. They're already at twenty million accounts right now, which is a pretty nice number. And that's before this happens. When that happens, the number is going to go way up. Uh, because I played it three years ago and I just came back. Three years ago, it was stagnating. The servers were not were just like half full. Now they're all filled to the brim. They have to buy even more servers. PlayStation fourteen is growing. It's amazing to me. It's tripping me out. And it's kind of just because there's not that many MMO options. You've got that, the Perfect World ones, you got WoW, and you got Boob and Soul, and then you got also Boobs with Terra, with Terra and then Black Desert. These are, all ga- these are all MMOs that are a couple years old. There's no like real big new ones, so it's just expansions of the old ones are what's getting people's attention. So there is a spot, and- but they could also fail, too. Final Fantasy XIV only doing good things over here with that change. They're also adding yeah. some extra clout, like extra bits here and there, but the big one is Heaven's Word as part of the free trial. Yeah, like, that's um, wow. that's huge. Just just to play, that's a lot of content right there. I don't. Then, there's going to be some restrictions, of course. Yeah, uh, naturally. For the free-to-play version, so... But maybe they won't be so bad a restriction. But the, uh, Oh yeah, there's one more MMO. It's uh, Re- Old Republic, right? Star Wars. Old Republic. Old Republic just came out on Steam, actually, yeah. funnily enough. Surprised me. It's it's a worthwhile play. There's some good stories in there, and you there's like four stories to go through in there. So that's a lot of hours of play. For free. Like, Old Republic's a weird MMO because you can almost treat it just like Kotor 3. You don't yeah. have to actually engage in any of the MMO bits. You just play the fully voiced single player campaigns of all the different cl- like classes. Like if you play mm-hmm. Like I haven't played it too much. I've only played one class in it, the uh, the Jedi counselor. I okay. want to play a healer. But like, if you play the scoundrel, you get a full like Han Solo style story. Yeah. Or you can go double agent sort of thing. If you can get a traditional like Star Wars Jedi story, if you go like the Jedi Guardian or the Sith, what the Sith equivalent of it. Yeah. And the, there's so many ways you can go with it. You you can like you can do a like a heel turn. And go dark side as a Jedi, or like turn to the light as a Sith. There's so yeah. much like choice there. There's a lot in of stories. Mm-hmm. It's pretty nice. It's like, free. Uh, like the free version, I think gives you four characters. I think while the paid version lets you have every character. <laughs> like yeah. you can play them all. It's just you can only have so many in the vault. Whereas if you pay for it, you can have well, like ten characters. I think when you only need like eight, because there's eight storylines you can go through. That's pretty good. Yeah. What else was there? We're coming towards the end of the presentation. Uh, there was Crossfire, Crossfire. So, announcing a campaign. It at least looked interesting. I'm I'm yeah. curious enough. I want to try it out uh, because it is. Yeah. Oh, it's partially because of the pedigree again. This is oh my god from the developers of Control and Alan Wake. Control. That I didn't expect. Control is freaking the game of the year for IGN last year. Like. Uh, a lot of people, I just played it. It's a really good game. Uh, Alan Wake was a really good storytelling game. Uh, Control was a really, really good evolution of that, where it's got really good storytelling and really good gunplay. So having Crossfire exist, like, all right, so we got the next thing they're making. Um, the gunplay should be solid and the storytelling should be solid. If neither, if, especially the storytelling is where they've gotten better and better over the years, because let's not forget... Not only did they make Alan Wake, they also made Max Payne. One and two. I don't know if they touched three. So they have a long line of games they've made. And so uh, they've only gotten better. There's always a chance of them stumbling, but it, the trailer made me interested. And then the worst kept secret in Microsoft's arsenal was revealed. Yes, in fact, Fable. Playground Games is picking up Fable. Thank heavens. <laughs> Fable isn't dead. It's one of my favorite franchises. Oh, that poor and fairy. It's oh that poor it's it's a classic. It's like, yeah, I, cool fairy. Psych giant toad. <laughs> I don't I don't know why people didn't like three. I like three a lot. Three was really good. I think it's just because people wanted more of two. 
but I'm happy to see another Fable. I want to see what direction they go because this is a reboot. Apparently, it's not got a, not got a number on the end. It's just Fable. Yeah, which so, is developer new ideas, um, perhaps no Molyneux influence, no Lionhead influence. So the what was it? I saw what the problem is. Rumors. I don't know if they're worth even mentioning the rumors. Um, one rumor was it might be an MMO, which I hope not. I don't really care for that. Yeah, I hope not. I I would just like to see another Fable. Like I liked Fable One, I liked Fable Three, I never got to play Two because Two was only on uh, Xbox, I think. Yeah, you can backwards yeah. compatible it right now on okay. Xbox, but not like PC or anything. I yeah, yeah. Think. So I've never played Two. I just know people really, really like Two. Yeah. Uh, but One was good. Three was good. And I'm hoping whatever this will be will be good. I just don't really want an MMO out of it. Oh right, Elder Scrolls is an MMO. All right, that's a thing that exists. Um, Elder Scrolls Online's popping off. It's, that's doing well too. Mm-hmm. I remember when it wasn't when it first came out. It did horrible. Oh yeah, that was that was rough. And then the game breaking bug happened. Oh my god. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Like I played, I'm like, oh, this isn't bad. I'm, it's kind of fun, but it's just more Elder Scrolls. And then the game breaking bug happened. Like, all right, I'm out. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> all right. So that is everything. I think it was a pretty solid. I thought it was solid. I thought it was good. Ending on Fables was not a bad move in any way, I think. There's a lot in here. So the big argument I saw from PlayStation people was quantity, like quality over quantity. I'm like, bitch, please. There's plenty of quality in here. What I'm liking is you've got this Game Pass. So there is 100 games that are going to be there on top of whatever comes out at release. So you have all these big titles and then all these smaller titles that you can also enjoy with the Game Pass. That is all a plus. That is big win there. Like, PlayStation's going to have amazing exclusives. Xbox is going to have some pretty good exclusives. I'm saying... No, that's the wrong word, because it's also on PC. Like, whatever Xbox happens is probably also going to be on PC for the most part. Which I think is just great, because that means they're going to sell more units. They're gonna, well, they're going to sell more copies of the games. How many consoles they sell, I don't know. Because it will eat into it a little bit. But is it about selling the consoles or is it about selling the games? Which one That's should the they make more money off of, right? And then the Game Pass. So, and Yeah, how do, do they focus so much on Game Pass? Are they selling Game Pass instead of selling the games? Yeah. Just- uh, well, obviously they do both. Um, but I really think Game Pass is their big selling point. It's, well, of course, the games themselves, but... The Game Pass is just such a good value. And of course, there's going to be people who are like, they just they want to own the physical copies. Those people still exist, like I do. I buy a lot of my games. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, I have so many Switch games in physical. So many. If they had a Switch Pass, I'd still own these games physically, just because. Isn't that because like, the Switch's memory like se- like setup is a bit funky, and it's kind also of annoying that- to have digital games on Switch? Also that, now that I think about it, it, they're very limited in their size. The biggest you can get is a uh, 128, uh, because it's a it's that little memory card thing. What is it called? Sun micro disk? SD. Yeah, micro SD, yeah. So the biggest you can get is like a 128. So that is a stumbling point for sure. It's, yeah, that's definitely a stumbling point, especially if you had like uh, some of the bigger games that are digital only. My take, though, on the whole like PlayStation versus Xbox thing, because that's it's always going to boil down to that at a base level. And if you're looking at it from that perspective, which a lot of people in the Twitter comments are on yeah. Twitter threads, is PlayStation, in my opinion, will undeniably have a stronger, more established first party lineup out of the gate. Yes, because they've got Ratchet and Clank, Spider Man, uh, Last of Us Remaster, inevitably, yeah. like Last of Us Two, PS Five. Ghost of Tsushima PS5 is oh a my God. Like yeah. Ghost of Tsushima, I finished that a couple of days ago. Mwah, that game is beautiful. Yeah. Uh like I'm fortunate enough to have like both the PlayStation down there and the Xbox there. So I'm not like I don't really have a side. Yeah. And so they're inevitably getting PS5, and Ghost of Tsushima in 60 FPS is something I want really bad, so we'll probably get that on PS5. Then whatever the hell's happening with Sony Santa Monica with God of War, are they going to do God of War PS5, or is it going to be God of War 2? We don't know. Mm. That's another thing. Then, so, PlayStation already has a strong established lineup ready to go 
for PS5. And then there's all the other stuff they're bringing up the rear. Xbox is going for a different strap. They're, like, they bought a bunch of studios. Like, Last E3 was all about, hey, kids, look at all the studios we bought. We don't yeah. have that many games, but they're coming. <laughs> and we're just starting to see them creep their heads over the horizon now. Like, we're doing things, don't worry. Yeah. And, like, you know, Obsidian pulled three things out of the hat. Like, the big one being, you know, Elder Scrolls set in Pillars of Eternity. That's not coming for a while. Yeah. And, like, you know, Halo Infinite is coming. You know, a Halo Infinite... A Halo game dropping for a new console is always a landmark. It's got to be good. You're competing with the likes of Halo 2. Better mm-hmm. be bloody good. Or yeah. no, Halo 1 and Halo 3, I think, were the dr- launch ones. Or was Halo 2 a launch title? Halo 1 I'm was a launch remember. title. Halo 2 was not a launch title. Okay. I think 3 Halo was a launch title. Wait, yeah, wait, wait, wait. so you compete with Halo 1 and Halo 3. And then, like, the Forza. Forza is Forza. State of Decay isn't coming for a while. Everwild, that game gameplay literally isn't decided yet. Then you've got a bunch of ports on stuff. Grounded is coming soon, July 28th. That's early access, though. Then there's just, like, more, like, don't worry, guys, it's coming soon. Stalker's a big hit, but again, coming soon. Warhammer 40k, like, Fat... Sh- is- I'm not sure if Fat Shark is owned by Microsoft or not. I don't I'm think pretty sure they're, indep- they're independent, as far as I know. Yeah. Like, there was, there was a lot of third-party stuff here. And then Fable, which is coming soon. Like, Xbox like you said, isn't leaning yeah. on the strength of that initially. They're leaning on the fact that, hey, kids, we got Game Pass and yeah. all this stuff coming and all <laughs> the stuff we've already got. Yeah, we're like, we got oh. games. Yeah, like, um, Dark Tide is going to be a console, ex- a timed exclusive to the console. That's the yeah. way it was worded. There's a couple games that are going to be that. So, like, uh, there's third-party games that they don't own the studios that are going to be timed, and then it'll be everywhere else. That's the way they put it. I'm like, that's fine. That's fair. All right. They're doing that. But I'd rather time exclusives than only exclusive. Um, yeah, I, I think it's going to be like, let's say PlayStation's got like the tens or nines out of tens. Like they got some really good games. Oh, like I to a higher. Ver- I completely forgot Final Fantasy remake. They could put on PS5, like part one. And then disc oh, right. two is coming. True. That's a big hitter too. Yeah, that'll do it. But, like, uh, PlayStation's gonna, gonna have these really, really, really good games. They'll probably have a couple more than Xbox will have. Xbox has some really, really, really good games, too. But PlayStation might have a couple more. And so what makes up for that is it balances out using just they have a lot of games. And those will fill a bunch of niches. And what it does is it gives you more games I can play all year. That's what the Xbox Game Pass potentially has. Well, the PlayStation is... Well, I got these select games that are really good, and now I'm going to get through them, and then I just have to replay them again, or some or something. Like basically, that's how PlayStation will be. So, yeah, I think Xbox has got a good position for what they want to do. I don't think anything optically is going to go against them or either console. I don't think either console is going to be negatively impacted by anything they've done so far. It's just whether or not they they um they make the landing or not. If they execute the landing or not. There's plenty of room for both of them. There's more and more gamers out there. The only competition is, well, how, where is your wallet going? That's it. That's the only competition. Like, where do you want to put your wallet? What games and things like that. The Game Pass just feels like a better value, though, if you want to just game all year with a variety of games. And then there's just I'm Destiny 2. <laughs> The only thing I'm like worried, if like my final summary of this entire thing is, what whatever PlayStation or Xbox put out next for their next big things, like yeah, their presentations, be it like PlayStation, I forget the state of play for PlayStation, and then the Xbox showcases. I don't want to see another one of those without an announcement of the price and the release date. Like oh, they're yeah. playing chicken, but they I. I want to plan my finances. Like I need to know when they're out and the price. Mm-hmm. Stop messing around, please. Yeah, for sure. I don't know. I don't know why. Th- it's almost time. They got to do it already. I'm really curious. Uh, they're they're going to have shortages. There's no way they're not going to have shortages with the virus happening. But we'll see. As bad as Nintendo shortages or worse? What are you putting your money on? That's a hard question, actually. I it 
in theory, it has to be worse because the just the chain of supply is going to be wrecked in so many direct in just so many spots. There's a potential for the chain to get broken for a while. So I'll say worse than Nintendo. Uh, Nintendo's conservative about it. I think both companies are going to try to make as much as they can, but somewhere in the supply chain is going to be hit because of the virus because parts are coming in from all over the place to make some of these things. Hell, even like the plastic itself could, like the case itself could be a supply issue. There's, because they're not all made in the same house. That's the thing. So many things are imported all over the place. How bad do you think the price gouging is going to be? Criminal. It's always going to be criminal. <laughs> That's how bad it's going to be. I'm just mm-hmm. glad uh, I have a PC, so I'm not that worried. <laughs> not that worried. Um, so I can still just play the games on PC. I'm just uh, just glad I got my I got the Switch. I'm good. Uh, they're still having shortages in that as well, which is annoying for people. I'm sure. Uh, I really I wish um I wish all the main companies could do direct sale, so we don't have scalp. No, then well they'd have to do direct sale, but they'd still have to be like you can only have so many of things and things like that. So that's a headache they don't want to deal with. So forget it. That was actually there was a on the PlayStation Australia or the UK site. Mm. There was some source code that someone managed to get into, which apparently had a reference to one order per household. So there might be limits like you describe. Okay. Like, scalpers will find a way around that, but it would be something I'd like. I'd like scalpers to not exist, honestly. I would really prefer they don't exist, because it just screws a lot of people over. Uh, I think that's everything as far as the Xbox showcase goes. Right now, Comic Con's happening, and I don't even know how that's happening. What's going on with that? I don't yeah, know if like, anyone's doing game it's announces. It's like virtual Comic Con sort of thing. I haven't seen anything too crazy out of it. Uh, I think most game announcements are being saved for the, the the Summer Games Festival that Jeff Keighley's doing, which this showcase was a part of. Yeah. And my only final question is, Scarf, sort of if we're continuing this chain of like us to go over conferences, when is the next big Nintendo Treehouse style show? I When's the next big Nintendo one? I don't think they're doing that. I think they're just going to do mini directs on, for the foreseeable future. I think that's all they're doing. They just did one last week. they're going to do a full fat one. They need to? Honestly, they do? Like, the last mini direct was huge for the Shin Megami Tensai people. That was a big one. Yeah. Uh, but I, I think they're just going to do the mini ones because it's just logistically easier to do minis. But if they could do a big one... They need one, because right now, what's on the horizon for Nintendo? Uh... Well, let's look at the things that actually just come out for a second, because the only two things that are on my mind from Nintendo is Shimigai Tensei mm-hmm. rework, or whatever's coming, and then apparently a new Five. Paper Mario dropped? Like yeah. Origami King? Origami like, King's I, amazing. That went completely under the radar. I didn't know about that at all. Uh, It was in, like, two directs, like two mini directs, I think, beforehand. But yeah, it was only if you were a big fan of Paper Mario did you know about it, I think, kind of thing. Like, Nintendo's been very quiet uh, during the pandemic for the most part. But they could they could release a big announcement. Uh, just because, well, you always want to have games churning out every year, or else what are you doing? Um, but the, the virus hit. It hit. Yeah. <laughs> it pushed things back. Like, Cyberpunk got pushed back again, right? Yeah. Last of Us 2 got pushed back uh, before Actually, it finally came many- out. How many games, like, we were overextending a little bit here, but I'm really curious because your Nintendo brain is much better than mine. I'm going off the top of my head of how many games Nintendo has on the back burner right now, big ones. Metroid 4, uh, New Zelda, uh, yeah. I forget the subtitle for it, it's just like the Breath New Zelda. Breath of the Wild 2. Yeah, Breath of the Wild 2. Uh, then uh, New Splatoon? Does exist. I don't, I, people keep speculating on Splatoon, I don't know. It New has arms, to. maybe? Um, ARMS, it would be interesting if they did another one. The first one kind of flopped, but it would be cool to see another one. I don't know. Smash uh, is still going with DLC characters. Yeah. They've got, uh, a, like, they've got another pass to fill out still. They just came out with, an, uh, funny enough, the ARMS, uh, yeah. one of the ARMS characters from there. Yeah, Min Min. Um, they need to announce another character this year for sure. At least one more character that, this year. They might go for two, but at least one more character needs to come out this year. Uh, to keep those people happy. 
I know this Splatoon needs to happen. I just don't know if they're working on it or if they're... It's, there's a lot of teasing that another one's coming, but they haven't really put anything out. At least I, I don't think I've seen anything. Shin Megami Tensei. So, for that one, it's a remake of, I think, two or three, I can't remember, which was a big classic for people. And then Five's coming. A new Shin Megami, Shin Megami Tensei is coming out. So, people are very hyped for that. Anyone who's a fan of that genre, uh, or that game series, is really looking forward to that one. So, that was a big one. Because people are like, there's not a big announcement here. Like, you're not a fan of this game, that's all. <laughs> this game is huge for people who are fans of that game. Oh, that reminds me. The only thing I really have on that is that specific mini direct they did was a partner mini direct. So it was specifically yeah. non first party stuff and it was going to be smaller. And yet yeah. people still bitch like, yeah. where's Smash? It's like, it's external mini. It's partner direct. Yeah. Guys, they, they, they put literally the sit it on the tin. Yeah. The, the signs are there. Well, I didn't read the signs. Well, it's your own fault then. That's, yeah. that's it. Is it? Sign put up. This sign can't stop me because I can't read. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, uh, there needs to be another Kirby this year for sure. But I said this All last time, I think. Um, Kirby has, a, has had a new game every single year of his 28 years being alive, except for 1998 or 1996. That's it. There's been a new Kirby mm. every year, either by remake or just a brand new game. And it's been, we're halfway through the year and there's no new Kirby yet, so something's gotta come out. Even if it's just a remaster, something's gotta come out. Uh, Because there's just always a new Kirby. The only thing that could stop Kirby, I guess, is might be this virus. Um, But they do need some more big, they need at least one or two more big announcements. Uh, But they've had good games this year, so I'm not really worried about that. It's just, you know, Nintendo really relies on itself at this point in time. But it has some third parties coming. What's the other one? Oh, Bayonetta 3 is still being worked on. Making sure people know she still exists. Oh, yes, Bayonetta 3. I forgot about that entirely. It's like Reggie showed it off at the Game Awards. And then it was <laughs> never heard from again. Yeah. They're still working on that one. I think Bayonetta 3 and, and Metroid Prime, Metro Prime 4 are both suffering from just... There's a lot of hype behind them, so I think they're just falling under the pressure on that. Well, it was, What's interesting is Breath of the Wild 2 has probably got a lot of pressure on it too, and they're still just going forward with it, so good on them. It'll be interesting to see. There's still some pretty good third parties coming out on Nintendo, so I'm not too worried. Uh, New Harvest Moon's coming out. Uh, Brigadine just came out. There's some pretty good stuff happening on there. It's just there's not a lot of advertising happening. That's for sure. Not a lot of advertisement is coming out on Nintendo, Compar- especially compared to PlayStation and Xbox right now. And that's the other reason is they don't need to be too loud because, well, it's a console release year. So yeah. they know they're not going to get the most attention out of everyone at the moment. When you've got like a kaiju and a Jaeger about to square off against each other in the middle of Tokyo, you don't come out and try and announce a boxing match. It's like you let those <laughs> two have the fun and then you come out afterwards with your own thing. Yeah. Like, the thing is, Nintendo's always run its own race. It's never really entered into the console wars on, on its on purpose. Everyone tries to fight them. They don't fight each other, everyone else. And But you also got to recognize when attention's elsewhere. So I think that's really what's happening is they know it's a release year. So you can't really go guns blazing when that's happening because that's going to take a lot of attention anyway. But also the virus happened, so maybe that really yeah. effed up their plans. For all we know, some key members might have got the virus, which is very scary, because Japan wasn't exactly safe about it at first. Because Japan's very already insular, but still, they're close enough to get each other sick anyway, so... It happened. They got each other sick. No place is safe. No one is safe. Except New Zealand. Good on you, New Zealand. Yeah, hobbit yeah. bastards. Um... Wear a mask. Damn it. Yeah, I think that's everything. Uh, look, Master Chief wears a mask all the time. Why aren't you wearing a mask? <laughs> <laughs> I wear a helmet so everyone can identify yeah, me. That's, yeah, that's about everything from the showcase. I can think of what's off my head. Like, the guy from Stalker wears a mask. Why can't you wear a mask? Who else wears a mask? That's because he's dealing with eldritch threats, though. He's dealing with the post-apocalypse. Um... The character from Fable eventually can wear a mask, so there you go. 
How many We're going to go down the rabbit hole if we don't call it here, my dude. We're going to go down the rabbit hole of which video game characters wear masks. <laughs> Kirby has worn a mask. Why can't you wear a mask? Kirby All could right. literally eat the virus, though. Oh, yeah, and then he would get the power. Come the virus. And I don't Kirby know what would happen. Kirby is COVID-19 confirmed. Kill Kirby. I don't know what would happen after that. All right, okay, okay, okay. We'll stop there. Pretty good. Pretty good talk <laughs> on the showcase. And, uh, yeah. Um, we're going to get the RSS feed back eventually, so this will eventually be up on podcasting stuff apps as well. Nice. For now, just YouTube, but then it'll be up on there as well. So, this has been basically a podcast with a very velocity. And so that's it. Thanks for coming by, everybody. See you next time.